Welcome to formatting your research paper with Microsoft Word on the Mac. A few tips first. It's really easiest to format your paper after you write your whole draft. Sometimes you don't have the luxury of doing that, but if you do, it's nice to do. So you can see here that I have written out my statement of purpose, my hypothesis, my research, materials list, etc. Uh, I also like to view my paper and page width so I can see more of it. It's easier to see. If you need to do that, uh, you can go into View, Zoom, and pick Page Width and say OK. And there you have it. All right, let's start with some formatting. Uh, our papers are supposed to be Times New Roman font, and the size is supposed to be 12 point, and the color is supposed to be black. Uh, that defaults usually to all those things, but if not, you would just highlight everything that you have. And, oh, I didn't get that, so we'll go back up. I would either type in here, Times New Roman, and hit Enter, or I could click the Dropbox and choose it. And then in the font, I would pick 12 point. And there we do, we have it set. I would also, uh, at that point when it was highlighted, I could also choose the color and say black. We do need to double space this, so I'm going to highlight everything again. There's a couple things you can do. Uh, you can right click on it, and you get the paragraph. Choose that, and then it says indents and spacing. Then we're going to go into line spacing and choose double. Say OK. The other thing you could do is go into format paragraph, and again, we could choose the line spacing, but we already have it, so we're going to leave that. However, one thing that Amanda wants to have single space still is this part on the first page. So I'm just going to highlight those four lines click paragraph and for those I'm going to click choose single and say OK. But the rest of it is still double spaced. Alright, our title is supposed to be 16 point so I'm going to highlight it and click 16 point and that's done. Um, this, the titles and our information is supposed to be centered so I'm going to highlight it and just click on the centering icon uh, I'm going to undo that now. Another way to do it is to highlight it, right click, pick paragraph, and under alignment, you can do the drop arrow and say centered, and say OK. You could also do that by clicking format, paragraph, centered, but we already have it. So there we go. Now we need to format our headings. These headings will go into our table of contents. We could just highlight them and change the font, but then they won't have the formatting that we need for our table of contents to make it automatic so you don't have to type it in. So be sure you do it this way if you want your table of contents to pull these automatically. So you highlight it, go up here into Styles, click Heading 1, and we're going to just do another one. Double click, we'll highlight if it's a single word, click Heading 1. Uh, and you'll notice they're in a different font. So once you do that, you can click over to here and say Times New Roman. I'm going to go back up and do the same thing to Statement of Purpose. Choose Times New Roman. All right, so if you're doing it all at once, you would double click, pick Heading 1, go back over here, pick Times New Roman, and I'm going to law um, pause here and do the rest off screen. Okay, so I've made all the rest of my headings, heading ones, observations, conclusion, bibliography, and my acknowledgments. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top of my paper where I put my table of contents holder when I was writing my paper. There it is. I'm going to click right beneath it. And I am going to insert the table of contents. So to do that, if you were on a PC in Microsoft Word, up here there would be a, t uh, a tab called Reference. 
you would click on reference and then pick the index and tables. But on this particular one, I can pick document elements. And here it see it says table of contents. I'm going to pick this one right here, the classic. And I just clicked it and I scrolled on. You can see there it just did made a table of contents, chose all my headings, put the page numbers on. But again, you can see it changed it to a different font. So I'm just going to highlight it, click back on home. I'm going to pick Times New Roman. And it's blue. Remember, Amanda wants it black. So I'm going to click on the color and pick, pick black. All right, there we go. So now that that's finished, we need to add the page breaks because they're supposed to be on different pages. So right where this holder is, I'm going to click. Then you can go into layout, click break, choose page, and now I'm going to go down to my next heading. Another way I can do it is click insert, break, page break. I'm going to hypothesis, I'm going to choose break, and I will do the rest of these offline and show you what I've done. All right, as you can see, each of these are now on their own page. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top of my page where my table of contents is. Because now that I've put these all on their own page, the page numbers have all changed. And since I did it automatically, all I need to do is right-click on my table of contents, then click Update Field. I'm going to click Update Entire Table, although you could just do update page numbers, but if you change how you spell something or change the title, if you click update entire table, it'll change that too. Click OK. And now, as you can see right here, the page numbers have all been updated. Excellent. Speaking of page numbers, let's look here. We do not have any page numbers on our pages. Oh, wait a second. We can delete this now. We don't need it. So highlight it. Delete. So. In Microsoft Word on the Mac, this is very simple. All you do is click on Insert and click Page Numbers. And now I can say I want it on the top of the page. I can say if I want it on the left, the center, the right. Uh, Amanda said she wanted it on the right. And actually, I don't want a number to show up on my front or first page. So I'm going to click that box and say OK. And now there they are. Page numbers all the way through. It's that simple. All right, next, update your table. We did that. Um, oh, for materials and procedures. If we scroll down there, for your materials, you probably have a long list of stuff. Uh, you will probably want to put bullet points in front of that to make it look a little nicer. And for that, that's pretty simple. You just click on Home. And then here under Paragraph, there, this icon, the Lines of Adults, is our bulleted list. You just click on it. I don't know why it doesn't, but usually you click here and now you can choose your bullet to library with the circles, the squares, whatever. I'm going to choose these. And voila, there we go. If I wanted to switch it, I would just click on that drop menu again and choose which one I wanted. Now, for the procedures, that you will probably want to have a numbered list. So again, you want to click, hold down and drag to the end. You don't get the all the way to the end, that's okay, just so you get the beginning of the sentence. Again, click up here by the numbered list icon, click the drop menu, and you can choose if you want the ones with the period, uh, numbers with the parentheses. I'm going to pick the numbers with the periods. And there it is, all finished. The last thing that I think we'll take a look at of this general stuff is inserting a picture. So I'm going to go up by my materials list. I think I need something in here. I'm going to click here and insert a picture of a skull, um, a cleaned skull, um, one that's already been finished. So I'm going to click insert and I'm going to go down to photo and I'm going to pick picture from file. You would have to navigate to where your pictures are. Um, I already set this up. It's in my downloads file. 
uh, that's the one. I'm going to say insert. Now it's really big. We don't want that. So I'm going to click on it so I get the dotted line and the little black sizing squares. And to keep its proportions, remember you need to hold on the shift key and then grab a corner and drag it to the size you want. Let's see. I think I'm going to make it a little smaller. So keep dragging. All right, now it's kind of lined up funny, so I'm going to double click on the picture, which will bring me my formatting picture menu. Um, I'm going to put, pick how I want it wrapped. I want it to be square, so the words will go around it. I also don't want it right here, so I'm going to just drag it to the side a little bit. And I want to put a caption on. If I right click, there's an insert caption, but in this it works really funny. I'm not really sure how to do it. So what I'm going to do instead is I am going to go into the, I think it's the layout, I'm not sure, so bear with me here. Here, on the home menu, and I'm going to click text box. You can also add a picture here. See the insert picture? If I clicked here, it would do the same thing. I can pick picture from file and then do it. But anyway, text box. I'm going to click text box. And then by clicking here, I'm going to get it. I can resize it with these. Well, I thought I could resize it. All right, I am not so good at this. I apologize. I'll pause it and figure out how to do it, I guess. All right, I figured out how to do it. If you grab the corner up here by the three, you can grab it and make it any size you want. I'm going to click inside and type. Sorry about that. Once you have the box, click inside so you get that cursor. And I'm going to type in links S. K U U L L. I can't see it all, so all I'm going to do is click on the box, grab that, and drag it down. I huh, guess I didn't spell that properly. Now, here's the deal though when you move your picture, that text box will stay there, so you might have to grab the text box and move it to follow it, but that works a lot better than the caption option. All right, so we've added an image. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is we're going to go back up to the very top. So Amanda had said that she wanted this part at the bottom. It's kind of hard to tell here, so I'm actually going to go into View, Zoom, and pick Whole Page in this case. And so now I can just click here. There's no real fancy way to do this. I'm just going to click and then hit Return. I think I want to bring this down a little bit too. And click in the middle again and hit return until it gets oh, too far. There we go. All done. And then of course I'm going to hit, I'm going to save my file. File, save. But just to go back and look, I'm going to go back to view zoom page width. OK. So, oh, this showed up here. If that happens because it doesn't work for some reason, um, just highlight, just white it out when you're done. Um, if you double click in there, if I delete it, I think it's going to delete all of them. It did. So I'm going to hit undo. I think if you do it right the first time, it'll show up. I must have messed up somehow. So sorry about that. But that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And Ask me in class if you have any other questions. Thanks.